Hello, I'm Sunny Terrell. I'm one of the founders of Mask Up New Mexico. I started back in March when everything else started. Robbie Sanchez also did. So we had two different groups going in the very beginning. And a friend of ours, our state auditor, Brian Colon, found out that we had two groups going, so he helped us form one. We started Mask Up NM. All, we put the two teams together. And as soon as we put up a Facebook group page, then we started getting flooded with lots of volunteers because it turns out a lot of women and some men we're already starting to sew. If you are a seamstress or a tailor, you tend to have a stash of fabric. So all of us jumped into our stashes of fabric, especially when all the stores closed because we couldn't get any fabric um, anywhere. So we were making masks, even if it was Christmas fabric, we needed to get as many masks as possible out. The very first delivery that we did uh, was all for first responders. And so we did a delivery to the sheriffs. We, did, we also made, we were making masks for the firefighters and also for police. So when we first started getting donations, because we put up a, a GoFundMe on the Facebook group page, as soon as we put that up, we started getting donations from people. We were able to buy fabric that was perfect for each of those groups. So red and black masks for the firefighters. It was tan and green, I think it was, for the sheriffs. And then we started getting more and more volunteers. We started out with like 20 volunteers. Before you knew, we had about 60 men and women sewing, and we were sewing our hearts out. Machines that you buy for home, they're actually not used for, for industrial. But because so, much, so many of us were going day and night trying to get so many done, to get them to the Pueblos, to get them to the, the hospitals, to get them to the first responders, uh, we were just driving our machines into the ground. What we had to do, because everybody was out of fabric and the um, Joann's and all the fabric places were closed because of the governor's order, but Walmart was still open because it was an essential business for food. So we, we, they ran out of fabric too and all the other materials we needed. So we started buying sheet sets and cutting those up and getting that material to all of our volunteers. Probably one of our biggest challenges was sourcing material and beyond getting fabric when everything was closed, but finding the surgical wrap. Because we had, we knew we could do something with it if we could get a hold of it. And so we had a couple uh, scrub techs at Loveless who just kind of shoved it in a bag <laughs> and brought it out to us and handed it to us. Um, they did not ask management and eventually management agreed to it. I'm Stephanie Bartlett and I'm the current director of Mask Up New Mexico. I am personally high risk, quite high risk, and I have family across the country that's in hotspots. And my best friend is a doctor and is working in hospitals with COVID patients even now. And so out of worry and anger, I guess, that they were being put in these situations, I started making masks. Then soon after, I found um, Mask Up New Mexico. I did a lot of the medical masks and organizing for that. And part of the reason is, is because part of my medical issues is my fingers started to fall apart. Like, this is holding my finger together. <laughs> and I've had two hand surgeries since then. <laughs> so I stopped sewing as much and started organizing more. And my first batch of masks that I donated through them went to the uh, After Hours Pediatric Clinic, which was desperate for masks at the time. And the, they needed specialty ones that were larger so that they could fit over uh, N95s that they had. My name is uh, Nick Zubel. I'm the senior planner with the Albuquerque Office of Emergency Management. I have served as the Emergency Operations Center manager for the COVID-19 pandemic response for the city for the last year. The Emergency Operations Center, or is what we call the EOC, the acronym, is the multi-agency coordination entity for the city for all kinds of hazards, from wildfires to large-scale earthquakes uh, to pandemics. In particular, personal protective equipment, we were um, assessing our, our supplies, potential shortages, and we started to really ramp up. So this was primarily a logistical response at that time. So March and April were very much involved, in, as I mentioned, ramping up that logistic operations. And that included involving a variety of different uh, nonprofit organizations and community groups that could donate uh, supplies and resources to us. In particular, Mask Up NM, who um, donated over 800 masks to our city departments 
uh, in particular, our uh, fire department and police department are essential frontline workers. So those, that resource was super critical and super needed at that time. We we're very grateful for that donation. Brian Fox contacted me through, through Robbie and he said, he says, you know, Sonny, I heard that your team is just, you know, knocking it out of the park and we need thousands. So not just for the first responders, but all the essential workers of the city. It was thousands, so they asked us for 5,000 masks. And so we went to our, our seamstresses and, and tailors and said, here's how many we need and we're gonna try to make them in like six weeks. And you know what, every single time they answered the call, because again, we're all stuck at home. And so we have time on our hands. Judge Samara Henderson, she's one of our seamstresses. And uh, she and I have been working together from the beginning. She so is from home too, and she was working from home. But now they're gonna go back to court and actually have hearings there. So immediately when we finished Brian's order for EOC, we started making them for the Supreme Court and for all the judges and what they, their needs were around the state. The other thing I want to mention is that one of the things that was important to us is that it wasn't just in Albuquerque that we got all of these materials. Um, immediately, we started hearing about the Navajo Reservation and also all the other Pueblos that needed masks desperately. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Garrow. I am a member of the uh, Minikoju Band of Lakota from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. I've been living here in Albuquerque for 13 years. And uh, when the pandemic first started, I, like everybody else, wondered what could I do. I also have a side business. I make purses and I make ribbon skirts and things of that nature. And I use nothing but uh, native patterns, uh, print fabrics. So I thought I could make masks because I have industrial machines and I thought I could make a lot of masks. I made them for my family in South Dakota and friends here in Albuquerque and their surrounding areas. And so I mentioned it to a friend of mine and she happened to be watching the news and, and mask up, they weren't called that at the time, but they had a segment on the news. And so she forwarded that to me so I got in touch with Robbie Sanchez and I says, you know, I'm available. I'm a seamstress. I have a side business. And so he reached out to me and the first uh, masks I made were for the uh, uh, Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. And I made 100 masks. At that time, I think it was the Navajo Nation was getting really hit hard with COVID. So I told him, hey, if you guys do anything for the tribal communities, count me in. And he did. He contacted me and he says, would you be interested in being the coordinator for the tribal communities here in the state? So I said, sure. One of my friends who is an attorney in South Dakota, she reached out to me and she said, I have a contact at Navajo Nation and, and they really need masks. So I got in touch with him and so I sent him 100 masks because I was able to, with my industrial machines, whip out 50 masks a day. For the Pine Ridge Reservation, the Ogallala, I was able to make 800 masks for their students. I made uh, 100 masks for their graduating class with our four sacred colors, which is black, red, yellow, and white, which represents all the four directions in all the four major races of the, the world. So it was really cool that I was able to help so many different tribes, not just here in New Mexico, but also in my home state of South Dakota. My significant other, he's an ER nurse and he works in uh, Kiwa Pueblo. And so I made a batch for them, for his health center. And um, he, was, he took them out there and they were so appreciative and so they wanted more. So I made some more and got those out there to them. But yeah, it was really reassuring to see people step up from, like I said, all backgrounds, um, just coming forward, wanting to help, wanting to make sure that these people had masks. 
What's so cool though is not only did we have the 60 men and women that were sewing, we also had a lot of people that wanted to volunteer and we needed them. We had what we call them runners. And those are the people that help us to get the materials to the volunteers all over the city and all, even outside like Rio Rancho and Los Lunas and then Tejeras. But we had runners and we would deliver material and pick up finished masks. We were able to get, you know, teenagers involved. I have um, two young women who were, they were seniors at the time and, you know, wanted some way to be involved. And so they did the majority of my driving over the summer until they left for college. When we look back at this year, or year and a half, whatever, two years, whatever it's going to take, we're going to say, you know, we could have been sitting around, but we could make a difference. And, uh, and I honestly believe that because people are wearing our, our masks, that we've saved lives. And it's hard to know, you know, I know there's been studies about if you wear a mask, how many lives you might save. Well, think of 50,000 masks and how many lives that might have saved. The one Albuquerque site really worked as a nice motivator for our volunteers because every week we could figure out how many hours the group had put in and how much FEMA reimbursement that counts as. And so when they start to see this number, these numbers get big, significantly big, and they start seeing, you know, wow, I've, I count just my work counts for, you know, $5,000. That's a significant amount. And that motivates people, okay, you know, I can do, I can do another 50 masks. I can do another 100. And seeing that not only is that helping right now, but that's helping our state not go into debt. <laughs> Uh, volunteering with Mask Up, I've, I've be, been able to meet some really neat people, uh, Sunny being one of them, Stephanie, I, just phenomenal people. If you're out there and you want to volunteer Mask Up New Mexico, that would be the greatest organization to volunteer with. So friendly and helpful. I mean, one of the things that drives me every day is being involved with the citizens of New Mexico and being involved in the world actually. I think that once you have a volunteer mentality and you're, you grow up that way, being, you know, making a difference, whether it's, whether we have a pandemic or not. So I hope that you'll consider, if you're thinking about it, being part of Mask Up NM because we still have at least a year's work in front of us and more projects coming on board.